In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a really cool multi-step form in Webflow. So right here, I have such a multi-step form for a web designer called Paola. And as you can see, if I click on the button, I get redirected to the next step. Also in the second step, if I click, for example, web, website design and go to the next step, you can see I get asked uh, the question, which design styles do you want? But if I were to click on consulting, I get redirected to a different step and get asked what type of consulting do you want? So as you can see, there is also some conditional logic involved here. And to build all of this today, we are going to use a tool called InputFlow and the website is InputFlow.io. What InputFlow allows you to do is you can build your form inside Webflow um, just like this. Here I have all of the individual form steps below each other and you can make it look exactly like you want it to look. And then with input flow, you can add the conditional logic and the multi-step functionality to the form. So that's basically how it works. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is you have to build all of your individual form steps in Webflow. Uh, as you can see, I have already done that. And let's quickly take a look at the navigator, how the structure of the page looks like. Here inside of this onboarding section, I have put a normal Webflow form block called onboarding form block because this is an onboarding form inside of which there is the onboarding form element, normal Webflow stuff. And inside of this onboarding form element, I have all of my individual form steps. And all of these steps are just normal div blocks with a class called onboarding step added to it. For example, if I select a one of these steps, you can see this is a, the first step. Then here we have the second step, the third step, the fourth step, and so on and so forth. Inside of these steps, you can see if I click on that, uh, we have all of the step content. So inside of these steps, you can just put your text, your headings, your images, and obviously also your input elements like your checkboxes, your radio buttons, and input fields. And just as a little side note, I will put a link to this clonable right here in the video description so that you can also uh, take a look at it and also use it if you want to follow along this tutorial. So once you've set up your form in this exact way, so with the form block, the form and inside of the form, all of your individual steps, you can go to the website inputflow.io and that's where we are going to build the multi-step functionality. Now, just as a little side note, as a little disclaimer, I built inputflow.io. So if I say this is a great tool, then obviously I'm going to be a little biased here. The first thing is you go to the front page and click on this button, get started, no sign up required. And then you get redirected to this page where you have a couple of instructions. I'm going to make this a little larger so that you can read it on the, on the YouTube video. And uh, here we have to do some additional preparations to connect input flow with your form. So as you can see, first of all, we have to add the IF step attribute to all steps of the form. So this is basically a way of telling input flow where your individual form steps are. You can think of these like a name tag. And uh, if we look at the steps right here in my form that I've already built here, you can see there's this onboarding step. And if I go to the settings, I've already added a custom attribute to it called if-step equals welcome step, because this is the welcome step. The second uh, step inside of the form has the attribute if-step, how can I help you? The third one, the uh, if-step with the value, which integrations do you want? And this is basically how it continues. So you can decide with the if step attribute, what name do you want to give your individual step? And it is important that this name is unique. So you cannot have two steps with uh, the same name. That doesn't work and will break the, the input flow setup. Uh, once you've done that, once you've given all of your individual steps this if step uh, attribute and a custom name, then you have to do a second thing. If we look at input flow, it's also written here in the, in the instructions. You have to add the if element equals button next custom attribute to all next buttons. So what are next buttons? If we look at the final version, you can see every step has a next step button 
And if I click on that, I get redirected to the next step. So that's what the next buttons are. And you have to mark them, you have to tag them in your Webflow project with this custom attribute. So you go to all your of your next buttons and add this custom attribute if-element equals button-next. So the, the name is if-element and the value is button-next. And then you only have one final thing left to do. Uh, as you can also read in the, in the instructions right here, you have to make sure that all of your form input elements have a good and descriptive name. So if we look at, for example, this checkbox right here, um, custom analytics, the name inside of the checkbox settings in Webflow is custom analytics because that's what the purpose of the checkbox is. Or if we take a look at this text field right here, uh, where users have to put in the date of completion, the name of this text field is called date of completion because that's what the purpose is. So make sure you have these good and descripti descriptive names and don't choose generic names like field 20 or field five or something like that. Because if you do that later on in the setup process, you're going to have a hard time to complete it. And once you've completed this for all of your input elements, you have to publish your website. So uh, you probably know how to do that in Webflow. You just publish the entire page. And then in input flow, you click on next step. Then you have to choose a site. So you have to paste the link to the page where the form is located. In my case, the form is located on the front page. So I'm just going to copy the link to the front page and uh, paste it in right here. By the way, if you just want to follow along the tutorial and to learn how input flow works, but don't have your form set up yet, you can just click this use demo button and then the link to this multi-step form that I built will automatically be uh, pasted here and then you can click on find form. Here we have to select from the dropdown which form we want to turn into a multi-step form. In my case, there's only one form on this particular page. So I choose that, delete onboarding form, and then I click on next step. And now it gets really interesting because here we are inside of the logic editor. Uh, logic is not related to Webflow logic. It just means the logic, how the individual steps are connected to each other and uh, what type of branching we have. So as you can see, we have all of the individual uh, steps as a white box and you can move these boxes around by clicking on them and then dragging it across the screen. You can also move the entire canvas by just clicking on it and dragging it across the screen. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel uh, or your touchpad, just like you would scroll down a page. And you can connect the individual steps with each other by clicking on a steps black handle and then this plus icon shows up. And then you click, hold your mouse key and drag the connection to the center of another step, release the mouse key, and then you have created a new connection. And if you want to delete a connection, you just double click on the connection and then it goes away. So let's set this up. Uh, first of all, the first step that I have on the page, uh, if we look at the final version of the form, it's this welcome step. And in the Webflow uh, designer, you can see if we look at the custom attribute, I gave it the name of welcome step. So we're going to connect this welcome step with the second step, which is this how can I help you step. So let's do that. Here is the how can I help you step. I drag it below the welcome step and connect the two steps. Okay, then um, inside of the how can I help you step, this gets a little more advanced because here, the way this works is based on the selection that I make here, I get redirected to a different step. So for example, if I uh, choose consulting, I get uh, redirected to the step called type of consulting. But if I were to uh, select website design, I get to the step called which design styles do you want? So that's what we have to set up now. Okay, let's uh, choose the first potential next step the select design styles and connect it. Then the second one, if someone chooses type of consulting, 
they get directed to the type of consulting uh, step. So I create a connection here as well. And if someone chooses Webflow development, then I want to ask them, okay, which type of integrations do you want for the Webflow development? So I create a connection here as well. And now we have these three different connections to three potential next steps. But how do we decide when to take which path to which step? Well, for that, we have the path settings. As you may have noticed, as soon as I connected this how can I help you step to two other steps, this path settings button showed up. And if you click on it, you can configure the path settings. Here you can decide based on what condition should we go to which step. So let's start with the first condition. Uh, the first con uh, condition decides when we want to go to the step, which integrations. And we want to go to that step if the input element, the radio button, Webflow development is selected. As, as you can see right here, if this one is selected, we want to go to the which integration step. Then the second rule um, says when we want to go to the type of consulting step. And obviously we want to go to that step if the consulting input element is selected. And for the last step, uh, for the last rule, we can leave it at the default. In any other case, we want to go to select design styles because there, now there's only one option left, this website design option. So we can just say in any other case, go to next step called select design styles. And now we have fully configured the branching and path logic settings. Click on done. And let's finish the entire setup. So after someone selects uh, that they want Webflow development and we ask them which integrations they want, for the next step, I want to ask them, okay, do you also need custom JavaScript? Because that's quite common uh, in Webflow development. So I connect this step to the custom JavaScript step. And then I want to ask them for the time to completion. So what's the deadline for the project? How long does it take? So I connect it to this step as well. And then I want to, let's drag these steps down here. Then I want to ask them, okay, what's your budget for the project? And I want to ask them for the contact details and they have to submit the form. So that's the uh, Webflow development path. Let's configure the other two paths. If someone selects which design styles they want, I don't want to ask them if they also need custom JavaScript because that's not relevant for design. Uh, I want to send them immediately to the time to completion step. And if someone selects, okay, that uh, they only want consulting, I don't want to ask them for a time to completion and neither do I want to ask them for their budget. I just want to send them straight to the contact details page. So I draw a connection here as well. And now, as you can see, all of the individual steps of our form are, are now connected with each other. The form is fully configured. We have also set up the path settings here. And just as a little side note, maybe you ask yourself, okay, that all looks good, but why does only one step has have this path settings button? The reason for that is because only this how can I help you step has more than one outgoing path. In this case, it has three outgoing paths. And so we have to configure some rules when which path to which next step should be taken. But for all of the other steps, in, at least in, in this form, we only have one outgoing path. So if there's only one outgoing path, only one path can be taken and we don't need to configure any settings for that. So that's the reason. And yeah, so now we have the form fully configured and I click on this blue button here on the top uh, on the bottom right, generate code. It says almost done. And I can just copy the code by clicking this copy button, or I can just copy the code configuration by copying this text field right here. And then you have to go back to your Webflow project. Inside of the Webflow project, go to the page where the form is located. In my case, that is the homepage. So I click on the settings icon of the homepage. And then I go to the custom code section 
and where it says inside the head tag, I paste this code configuration. Then I click on save, publish the website, and let's take a look at the final version. You can see we have this, hi, I'm Paola, this is the welcome step. If I click on work with me, it goes to the second step, just like we configured it a few moments ago. If I click on consulting, it redirects to type of consulting, perfect. If I um, click on website design, it redirects to which design styles do you want, nice. And if I click on Webflow development, then it redirects to which integrations do you want. Perfect. And then to custom JavaScript. So this is how you can build really cool multi-step forms with input flow. Um, I will go, I will put a link to this clonable of this website in the video description. And also if you have an idea or a suggestion or a feature that you would like to see implemented in input flow, you can just go to inputflow.io and click on this blue send feedback button and then type in your email and your message and send a feature request or a suggestion or a general feedback or a bug. And if it's a good feedback, it's a, if it's a good idea, then I will implement it. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day. My name is Mike. Bye.